Today I will be performing a U27 draft with a twist. Are you guys getting tired of drafts yet? I am. I'm gonna try to get a career sim of some kind out before this just so I can split it up a little bit. But honestly, right now I just haven't really thought of anything else to do. It's too close to NHL 24 to start a series or something like that. So we're kind of trapped right now. I could maybe come up with something else like a five on O. As you guys have seen recently, I've done a would you rather. I've recorded a try not to laugh. I'm not really sure if I even want to upload it though. I did get a lot of clips from it for shorts and whatnot, but it's still kind of just sitting on my computer and I'm debating. So anyways, I have to draft players that are 26 years of age or younger. And there is a bit of a twist, as I mentioned. The comment says that I have to get a 32 year old player or higher at the trade deadline if we do not have 35 wins. And I am going to one up that and say that I have to get two players that can be the veteran presence in the locker room. So let's go ahead and find out what team we're going to be using. Boom. Buffalo. I'm in. Actually, fun and unnecessary fact, as of when I'm recording this, the Buffalo Bills home opener is tonight. I love me some football. No owner mode, no jabroni. I will leave CPU trades on because we might be trading, so it's only fair. Fantasy draft and no no. Okay. Think we are all set. I'm just trying to think. No, it probably doesn't make a difference which draft position I get, so really, give me anything. But if I had to pick one just for the odds of it, I'd say 12. 18. That's fine. I would also like to point out that I'm going based on this game. So maybe they're 27 in real life now. If they're 26 in this game, then that's all that matters. Oh my word, we actually have a lot of options here. To be honest, I'm really leaning towards Tage just because of the 1.4 that he's making in this game. That is extravagantly tempting. Dalene, I could bring him back. Or I could bring Tage back. Kirill the Thrill. Man, they did not make this easy for me, but I'm going with Tage. I want to get a good goalie, and I feel like Jake did well for me last time I drafted him. I know that Katahat did not do well for me last time I drafted him, so let's go with Jakey. You know what? I take it back. I am going to try to draft players that aren't 27 in real life as well, so just add the extra challenge. Travis Konechny could be our first line right winger. We definitely need a sniper on the left side. Jake DeBrusque is a sniper. Four-star shooting. However, Boldy also has four-star shooting. Yeah, let's go with Boldy. However, I'm also going to grab DeBrusque, just in case. Oh, dear. What have I done? Okay, let's start off with Bogefist. I'm probably going to draft a bunch of defensemen in a row right here because I feel like we need it. Carlo's also a righty. I did not know he was 6'6". This man is a unit. Yup. Lindgren, I was finally able to find a lefty. Hag is also a lefty. So you know what? I think I'm going to go with Lindgren. Come back, get Hag, and then we are going forwards. I had to scroll way longer than I was hoping for, but Sprong is 82 overall. I have a feeling we're making some trade deadline moves. Ooh, Sharon Govich. 82 overall, 2 million. I will absolutely draft you. Lawson Krause is a great find. Sure, he's making a little bit for 82 overall, but from the picks that we have made, can definitely afford it. Another left winger here in Giryanov. That gives us four already, but again, I don't really care. Put them on the right side. Maybe one of them has decent face-offs. We'll find out when we put the lines together, but for now, I'm just trying to get players so that we can edit lines. What is the best overall backup goalie we can get is the question, and it is probably Ingram at 80. Sure, why not? Yep, I love it. Matthew Joseph, 80 overall, and he is a right winger. He shoots left, but listed as a right winger. Perfect. I tried to put my mic a little bit lower because I noticed that clearly this pop filter doesn't work that well. Rem Pitlick. I, to be honest, have never even heard of this guy, but I am super down to draft you. We need centers. Only 70 face-offs. Not a big fan of that, but 1.1. Even though we really need to start eating up some cap here. I can admit when I'm wrong, and I believe that Tage was not the move. Don't think that was a good first pick. And the only reason I say that is because of the cheap salary that he has for this year. Because we have $38 million left, and there's no way we even get close to the cap. So it's going to have to do some auto-adjust thing, I imagine. I don't really know how that works, if it just gives players more money or what goes on. Rasmus Asplund. Exactly. 
making under a million yet again. All that remains is two defenders. And we can go try to put these lines together. Okay, Bryson's lefty. Jeremy's also lefty. Which one should I go after? Two-way defender, defensive defenseman, four-star physicality, three-star. We're going with our boy. Ian Mitchell, sure. Yeah, you could be on the final pair. 77 overall is not ideal, but I think probably the best bet that we have right now. Oh, uh, there we go. Strongly thinking we're going to need to make the two deadline moves now to get some veterans, but we'll see what happens. And I also have to trade the youngest player, Z, I suppose. I think Tage is the only one we have with a gold X factor as well, but we've seen teams with like no gold X factors make it in. So was really excited to see this until I realized that Gallagher's here, which is not going to fly. Oh, even better. I put Joseph in. It's a plus two. You absolutely love to see it. I'm not going to change anything. I'm just checking, okay? So we will leave DeBrusque on the first line. Boldy will be the second line here with Sharon Govich and Sprong. <laughs> yeah, we're going to not be good. How's our defensive chemistry? That's okay. We allow that. Ooh, okay. Is there anything I can do here? I don't really want to move Mitchell up to the second pair, so I'm going to leave it at all zeros. Yep, that's fine by me. In net, Ottinger and Ingram. So we will definitely have to trade Boldy at the deadline if... If we aren't doing well, again, I would say that's likely, but not guaranteed. Bogfist would be the other player to go. So we need to get like a veteran defenseman and a veteran forward. Yeah, I guess Tage Thompson gets the most points with like 55. I don't know. I don't have high expectations for this team. So watch us be unreal. Started off 1-3-0, and but we're getting some W's here. That's good to see. Let's go. Are the young guns... Firing each other up? Rallying? No, they're not. Players do grow throughout the season, though, so it is possible that these guys go up in overall. But if we're playing like this, I'd say that's really unlikely. At least have a record that is, like, redeemable by the trade deadline, you know? So that if we do pick up some veterans, we have the chance. I don't think we are, though. Oh, yeah, I think we're on a four-game winning streak right now. Keep it going. Nice. That's fine. That's fine. Maybe not. Okay, the West Coast USA not treating us so well, but we beat the Leafs. Amazing. Great job, guys. We're at the trade deadline. <laughs> 23 wins. I'm a buyer. Absolutely. Enter the trade deadline. Someone who is 32 or older. No. We could try to get Lindholm. The only problem is he's lefty. And we have to trade a right-handed defender. Oh, uh, this looks pretty even. They don't want Bogfist. They want to get rid of Ekholm. Again, he is lefty, but I want to try and get a decent player in return for Adam here. So let's give it a shot. Trade accepted. And yeah, it seems pretty fair. And now it's Boldy's time to hit the road. We could always bring in Jamie Ben. He could just go out there and stir the pot, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, I don't think we're making playoffs anyway. So bring the two veterans in. What? I guess I'll give you a seventh as well. There we go. All right, let's go see how much that changes our team. Oh, that's a pretty big trade. I mean, Lindholm is the biggest name there, but sending four pieces back. Didn't draft you. Gallagher, I also did not draft you. Get out of here. Oh, there we go. Good sub. We got Jamie Ben there now instead. Defensive chemistry might have got worse. No, it got better. Ekholm and Carlo. Okay. I'm in. Jamie Ben still has the most points on our team and he has 47. That's not good. Although it's likely going to reset in NHL 24, and who knows if I'll even do another draft in NHL 23 after this one. I think Tage Thompson is joining kind of hot on the do not pick list. He just never seems to work out for me. I don't know. We came out of the deadline with two straight wins and then we just sucked again. But you know what? We're doing okay. No, we're not. Well, that was a disgrace. We finished last in the division and there is a very real chance we finished last in the league. The San Jose Sharks get the president's trophy. They had Kachuk playing with Suzuki and Keller. Tavares, Adina, and Tomasina. Wow. Okay, Kemper and Nett. White Cloud on the first defensive pair. Sure. It seems like a good team, but the overalls just seem kind of low. No? The first 16 teams made it, so that's good at least. And we didn't finish dead last. We were 30th. Beautiful. The Oilers and the Penguins finished underneath of us. 
Kreider Point and Buchnevich. Interesting first line. Reichel, Novak, LeBanc. It looks like they were drafting some younger players as well, so I think they were trying to deploy a similar strategy to us. I really can't help but think if this would have gone a lot different if I drafted. You know what? I'm going to do a speed draft after this. You guys are getting a two for one today. I do have to get ready for golf soon though, so it's going to be like a speed speed draft. Page had the most points with a nice amount. Connecting had 67. Jamie Benn had 61. How'd our goalie do? Not bad, to be honest. Considering our record, Kemper had a season and a half. He had 42 wins in just 64 games. Jari and Vazzy both had 40 and 71, so Darcy was winning. He had a 919, although these two guys did have better save percentages. Kale McCarr leads defenseman. The NHL 24 cover boy had 76 points. Riley had 75. EK65 was 73. Morrissey's up there. Good for you. McDavid is your Art Ross winner, but will he be the Art Hart combo winner is the question. The Rocket Richard goes to Marchand. Attaboy, Bradley. Polino had the most fights by a lot. And who had the most penalty minutes? Because these are the important things. Where is it? There it is. Boom. It would, in fact, be Marcus. Bobrovsky had an insane playoff run. Almost a 930 save percentage. 214 GAA. That's pretty good. Burns and Hughes both had 14 points, except Hughes did it in 18 games, whereas it took Burns 23. Kale McCarr had 11 points in 13 games. That is very solid. A 20 shooting percentage. Kale. Leon had 25 points in 23 games. Philip Forsberg had 24. Rantanen, I guess he will probably be the Conn Smythe winner because I think it was Boston that won the cup. Arvidsson with a 22.4 shooting percentage. That's extremely solid there, Victor. Award time! The Bruins did win the Stanley Cup. San Jose Sharks get the President's Trophy. Colorado Avalanche with the Campbell and the Prince of Wales obviously goes to Boston. The Art Ross... And the heart. The art heart combo goes to McDavid. Seeing him in a Capitals uniform. Please? Morrissey gets the Norris. The Lady Bang goes to Pasta. That a boy. Matthias with the Calder. Rantanen did get the Consumite. The Vesna goes to Jari. Vazzy takes home the Jennings. Masterton to Labushkin. Jack Adams. Brule. Nailed it. Crosby gets the Selkie. The Ted Lindsay goes to McDubstep. And the Rocky Richard, as we saw, goes to Brad. Here is your playoff tree. Speed draft time. I'm going to randomize a team the old-fashioned way. I hit the microphone. But anyway, we get the Broad Streets. The same three settings. Continue. Give me a good pick. Actually, I don't even know what a good pick is for this again. 22. Quinn Hughes does do very well. Routinely. Charlie McAvoy. Okay, let's go with Quinn. Kyle Connor. Gonna try to get as many golds as I can. I can't lie, that's probably the only gold I am going to be getting. Troy Terry, then we just need a good playmaking center. Never mind, we're taking a 2A forward. Eric Sinek. I'm this far into the draft and have one defenseman. <laughs> I don't think this one's gonna go any better. I drafted four left-handed defenders. It is possible that this one turns out to be even worse than the other one. Oh, uh, I mean... All we can do is give it a shot. I'm doing something a bit weird here. I'm going to try the chemistry route. If this isn't working, I'll come back and just do best lines. But it was literally giving me negative chemistry for best lines. Uh, yeah. We could do that. And then that. Lovely. And now we've got Logan Thompson backed up by our boy, Maki Niemi. If we go back here, I think everybody should be good. Yeah, we're set. All right, so let's go lose some hockey games. Sounds like fun to me. Um... There's no way we keep this up, right? Yeah, that's more like it. We're definitely looking better than the other one, though. So that is promising. Still don't think 35 wins by the trade deadline is going to happen, but maybe I shouldn't say that as we are at 21 and it's December. Come on, get to 35 wins so I don't have to trade away Hughes. I want to keep him. We need five wins here. That's a great start. Oh yeah, we're going to do it. There's no way we lose all of these games. No shot. Two more wins. And the lads get to stay together. There's one. No. One of these. Yes! There we go! The band is sticking together. I'm just going to keep simming. There's no point of going to check the trade deadline. There you go. That's a trade. If you want to see a trade. I don't believe what I'm seeing right now. I'm very happy. Don't get me wrong, but I'm just... 
shook to my core. There's no way we get 50 wins. Absolutely not. No, we're losing a lot here out of nowhere, but still third in the division. Big win there over the Sens. Okay. Let him cook. We still can't get 50, but 45 wins is extremely impressive. We finished the season 4-5-1. and one. Ugh. 96 points would get us second in the division. The Capitals had 110 and were first. Did they win the Presidents? No, they didn't. The Dallas Stars with 120. Malkin, Kopitar, and Rantanen. Shifley, I follow Palat. Yeah, they have a good team here. They do. We finished eighth in the entire league. Now I'm even more impressed. Like, holy. We did cook. The 18th place team made it in. But again, I've seen much worse. So not going to even comment on that, really. Maybe it's a good thing we didn't get Capers off. <laughs> Kyle Connor, baby. 85 points, 34 tucks. Besser did phenomenal. Let's go. He had 78 points. 73 from Hughes. I knew I could count on you. Logan Thompson didn't do so hot. He had a 901, but E2 did all right. 907. Hughes had more than double our next defenseman, which checks out because if you check the overalls of our other defensemen, you will not be slightly surprised. Vanacek had the most wins and a sub 900 save percentage. What is that? And then Shesterkin also had 44 wins, but he had a 914. McCarr and Hamilton went off, but Hughes is top three. So that is a dub. Stamkos with a not Rocket Richard because it looks like Cooch outdid him there, but he gets the Art Ross and 52 would be enough for the Maurice. I won't be able to jump into any real-time Sims here because I do gotta get going, but let's see how we can do in the playoffs here. Come on. Nice. Oh yeah. Not a sweep. Do not get reverse swept though. Lovely. I will do this for you, however. Carolina Hurricanes, they had Fabry, Horvat, and Pasta. Rudolph's Balser is on the second line, and Rory on the third? Some of the choices that these computers make. Jonathan Taze, a fourth line right winger. Yeah. Okay. Defense, they had Orlov and Montour. Taze playing with Bouchard. They do have a fairly solid team. I don't know how we dusted them so easily. Pavel Zaka clutching up. Six points in five games. We got the Washington Capitals. Let's see what we're going up against here. They have Tara Sancho, Sebastian Ajo, and Patrick Laine. That is a very deadly first line. It even made me stumble upon my words. I was that nervous. Zadina, Chandler, and Duclair. They even got depth. This is going to be a tough one. Lindell with Severson, Owen Power, Jan Ruta. Who's their goalie? Oh my, come on. Let's go Flyers. Oh. What? Even if we get swept against the Canadians right now, I don't care. That was a miracle on ice. Let's go, Norris! The Montreal Canadiens have Matthew Kachuk, Steven Stamkos, and Zach Hyman. That is a good first line. Yorkstrand, Newhook, and Van Riemsdyk, so they tail off quick. It's just that first line. Defensively, Shillington with Hamilton. Again, they have a lot of weak points here. And in net, they got, I swear on my life, they finished 8-2-0 and, and had 50 wins. Of course, Katahat be clutching up for other teams here. Okay, all right. It is a best of three. No, that's not good. I, I kind of want to jump in real time. All right, let's just do it. I'll send the first two periods. And we'll do the last one as a times eight. Boom. What an offensive first period. And let's go, Leonard. Four, three. All right, come on now. Times eight. We have the power play. Gets killed off. They don't have a lot of shots right now. Yes, Shorty from Lindstrom. You absolute goat. Okay, we have a two goal lead. 10 minutes remaining. Can we push a game seven? Hyman's got something to say about it. Come on, Flyers. Come on, Flyers. Yeah! Game seven of the conference finals. Winner moves on to the Stanley Cup finale. I'm real time simming this the whole way through. I have to. That's not a good start. That's really not a good start. We are down by two, but you know what? I still believe in the lads here. Let's go. Second period. We're out shooting them right now. Again, apparently goalie is the weak point here. Logan Thompson. Actually, yeah, he didn't do too well during the season, so never mind. No! Coronado scores. It's 3-0 Montreal. I thought they were going to make it four, to be honest. We aren't out of it yet, but... Definitely does not look good. Okay. Yeah, I think we're done now. 
It's too tall of a task. Honestly, though, lads, great effort. I cannot be more expressive of my proudness. I'm so good at English, it's crazy. And the Canadiens go on to win the Stanley Cup. All right, let's look at some stuff real quick here. Norris, 14 points, did very well in the playoffs. I'm curious to see how Logan Thompson did. Okay, we actually have 14 from Hughes, Terry, and Norris. Kyle Connor had 12, five goals. Yeah, you know what? I'm not really gonna put the blame on anybody here. Nobody is taking the brunt of anything, okay? You guys are all just accepting my gratitude for how well you played somehow. Even Logan in the playoffs did all right. He had a 9.15 and E2 had to come in, I guess, in relief at some point and he did well. Yeah, of course, of course. He has a sub two GAA, get out of here. McCarr and Hughes, similar on pace here. 16 points in 18 versus 14 in 16 games, but Hamilton is up at the top here. He did it in 22 games. So I think Kale performed a little bit better. Capo Caco could have been the Con Smythe winner, but no, it is gonna be Steven for sure. Yeah, it has to be. I could see an argument for Hart because he did have a sub two, but they won't do it. They never do it. Art, Hart combo, Kale McCarr with the Norris. Okay, so Calder goes to Shane Wright. Let's see here. Wait, I passed it. Con Smythe, Stamp Coast. Yeah, all right. That is to be expected. There you have it. That one went a lot better. So it is possible. We got all the way to the conference finals and lost in seven. So close yet so far. All right, I gotta get going for real, but thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe, like, all that stuff if you can. I would greatly appreciate it. I will see you soon.